Friends of Model Trains, welcome to another video in our Digital for Beginners series. Today's video is all about our booster. What is a booster? What do we need a booster for? And how do we connect a booster to an existing model railway system? A booster is a power circuit extension. By extension, we mean that the capacity of the control center is no longer sufficient, perhaps because we want to control several vehicles at once, or because we have connected a lot of points and signal decoders, and therefore we require more current, more power on the track. In such cases, it is possible to extend the track and DC voltage using the booster. When do we need a booster? This is a frequently asked question. How many locomotives can be driven using only one control center? There is no specific value in answer to this question. One person may be able to drive two locomotives, the second may be able to drive five locomotives, and yet another might even manage to drive seven with one control center. Why is the difference so great? The answer is simple. A modern locomotive currently consumes between 200 and 500 milliampères in operation. Older locomotives, which can feature even larger motors, use different technology and can consume up to 1 ampere. Therefore, if you have 2 amperes of power and one locomotive which draws 1 ampere of current, you will quickly reach your capacity limit. If you have a lot of new locomotives, where one locomotive may consume only 300 milliampères, then of course you can control far more locomotives at the same time. That is the reason for the difference and the statement that it is possible to drive three to five locomotives without requiring a booster. If you have the Z21 start, then it might be that you don't require a booster straight away. The Z21 start features the small plug-in power supply. This has two amperes more power. As an initial step, it's possible to use the large Rocco switching power supply as it provides three amperes of power. This gives you 1 ampere more power on the Z21 track output. The control center has a maximum output of 3 amperes. Therefore, the first step towards a power circuit extension would be the large power supply. You can replace the mains plug on the Z21 starts with a large power supply to get 3 amperes on the track output and therefore 1 ampere more power on the track. However, if you then need more power, you'll have to use a booster. Ideally, you could procure a second power supply with the article number 10851. Then you'd have 2 times 3 amperes, meaning 6 amperes in total. If you don't need that much, but for example are content with 5 amperes, then we recommend the Z21 with the large power supply and 3 amperes, and the booster with the small power supply and 2 amperes. The important thing to remember here is that when you switch the large power supply, then this large power supply should always be connected to the control center, and the small power supply to the booster. If you do it the other way around, problems may occur, or the system may shut down because the control center cannot cope with the overvoltage in the booster output. So how do we install a booster? What conversions do I have to make on my system? It is necessary to separate the system. Two pole means that both rails have to be separated. It is always advisable to divide the system by approximately half of the consumers, so that each area has approximately the same number of consumers. There is little sense in having five locomotives running in one area and only one in another. The track power consumption should be relatively equally divided. How do I separate my track? The radical way to do this is to take a cutting disc and to cut through the rail profile. Of course, that's one way to do it. Another, more complex but visually pleasing variation is to replace the metal rail connectors with plastic ones. These basically then insulate the disconnection, and yet you still see a clean transition, a clean rail connection with electrical disconnection. I'll show you how to do this briefly. To install an insulating connector here, of course, you have to disconnect the track and remove the metal rail connector. You can do it with a screwdriver, but as already shown, it's easy to slip when you do this and jab yourself with the screwdriver, which hurts and therefore doesn't make much sense. It's always better to use a little pair of pliers to grip and pull off the connector. And there we have our rail connector. We can cut off the injector molding. We just need the connector and we just have to insert that onto the rail base.
When you insert it, the connections are pushed together. You can hardly see the alteration, but now your track is electrically disconnected. You have to carry out this separation in all areas so that the systems are completely separated from each other on both poles. Now the system is disconnected on both poles. If we run our locomotive now, it moves over the separation and stops. Logically enough, because there's no power on the other side. Therefore, the booster also has to be connected to the second half after separation of the tracks. To connect it to the track, take one track section. Again, make sure that the digital connection track has no anti-interference capacitor. This is now installed in our track. First of all, we swap the small power supply from our Z21 for our large switching power supply and use the small power supply for the booster. Next, we have to connect our track connection plug with the booster. Again, this takes place via the main track output. And now the booster is connected with the track. The booster is only a power circuit extension. That means that it can't emit switching commands to the track. The drive switching commands still come from the Z21. Therefore, it is necessary to connect the Z21 with the booster, for which we have a booster cable. The booster is connected to the control center with a smaller plug, a bit like a mouse cable. To do this, plug in the cable at one of the two ports and connect the other end to the control center. Connect the power supply from the Z21 to the power connection. Now the data lines from the booster have to be connected to the Z21. The VBUS or booster port is provided for the purpose. The cable which is inserted into the booster is now also connected to the control center. In this way, all switching and driving commands are forwarded from the control center via the data cable to the booster and the booster emits these commands to the track again. If we run our locomotive now, you can see that it works. The booster supplies the second half of the system with voltage and the locomotive can now run in a circle once more. The locomotive can run across the separation points without issues, no jerking, no stopping and the system power has been increased by 2 amperes. That's all there is to say on the subject of power circuit extension using a booster. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.